Hey guys and gals, Mama Bear here with the Daily Dash of Life. Today I will be giving a tutorial on an intermediate crochet pattern called the 10 Stitch Blanket, written by Didri Oos. She actually converted it from a knitting pattern by Frankie Brown. So I'm so grateful and thankful to them both. Thanks Didri, thanks Frankie. I will be reading the pattern out loud and I will also be adding in notes that I hope you will find helpful. So in the meantime, get your stuff together and don't forget your 12 gallon cup of tea because you will need it. You need to stay alert for this pattern and pay close attention. See you in a minute. I'm really excited about this video, but I also wanna make sure that I do it justice and make it easy for people to follow, especially for all the people out there who have so many questions on it. I've seen so many questions and comments on Didri's, um, on her forum for her pattern that I just knew I had to make a video for it because I didn't find it too difficult to Before do. we get started though, a few little side notes I want to add. One, you need to make sure that you're not sleepy in any way, shape, or form. This pattern is going to take all of your attention, all of your focus, so please do not get distracted in any way. And make sure you have your 12 gallon cup of tea close. And um, if wine will help you with that, keep your wine close. Or if a cold glass of water will help you stay alert, then have your cold glass of water. If you have your music, put your music on. Um, I would say pop in a movie but that might distract you. So music might be better. I have so many things um, that I wanna go over with you in preparation for this pattern that I had to jot a couple down. My second note is to read through your pattern closely several times before beginning. This is imperative because the pattern uh, jumps around a lot. She has diagrams that go with what she's talking about. So just get really familiar with the pattern. And also, if you could print it out, that would be best. Um, I didn't print mine out until recently for this um, tutorial. I had to do mine online and on my phone, and I did a lot of um, back and forth jumping around. So it might be easier for you just to print it out and then read along as it goes, and then you could flip through as you need to. Let's see, what else do I have here? The more you read it, the more you end up picking up things you didn't find last time. So you realize, oh, wait a minute. So this goes here, that goes there, that goes together. I'm supposed to go from here to there. It just makes it a lot easier the more you read the pattern. Feel free to pause this video now or any time during the tutorial. If you pause it now, you can give yourself time to go and read the pattern several times, get familiar with it. Like I said, that will be your best bet that's your first step to do. My third suggestion is to get very familiar with your diagrams. She has pictures and illustrations to try to help you through the process, so get familiar with those. When I first read the pattern, I thought I was looking at the correct diagram, but then the third time I read through the pattern, I realized, oh, no, I was not. So, you know, no wonder why I was so confused. So just get familiar with your diagrams. If you have to run the numbers to go with those diagrams, let's see, row one goes with picture one, row two goes with picture two, or you know, anything like that, so on and so forth, then do that. By all means, do that. That's another really good thing about printing out the pattern is that you get to write on it. It's your pattern, you do what you want with it, and your notes make sense to you. So feel free to print it out and write notes. Also, Create a checklist to keep track of your work in the beginning. It's the trickiest part. So your checklist should be as follows. First square, ending corner, beginning corner, ending corner, which she um, writes in as subsequent ending corner, beginning corner, which happens to be the subsequent beginning corner, middle section, ending corner, beginning corner and repeat at middle section after that. And as we go through, it'll make more sense. 
Each middle section will be followed by an ending corner and then a beginning corner. I have a couple of diagrams. Well, Didri has one diagram. So here's your first square. Then work an ending corner. The green is going to be your ending corner. And then the pink is going to be your beginning corner. Again, the green is your ending corner. Then you do a beginning corner. Then your middle section. Ending corner, beginning corner, and so on and so forth. Okay, so how that looks in the diagram is going to be first square, ending corner, beginning corner, ending corner, beginning corner, and your first middle section. Okay. Then it just slowly begins to grow. Here's your, let's see how to, this way. Starting here with your first square. This will be your ending corner, which I actually flopped these on accident. Ending corner, beginning, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section, ending, beginning, middle section ending, beginning, middle section. And like I said, the very beginning is gonna be the trickiest part because you have to do so many back-to-back -back corners. And that's why you need that 12 gallon cup of tea. And I will be coordinating the yarn with the illustration as I'm doing the pattern and the tutorial, but feel free to just use one color. I would hate for you in the learning process to be switching colors because that will be more difficult for you. You need to wait till you're really, really used to the pattern. Um, you're more at ease with it, but do not, I would not suggest to start changing colors at this point and neither will Didri. She even put in the pattern for you not to change colors at this time. My fifth piece of advice is to keep the big picture in mind and think of what you are trying to achieve. The big picture you wanna keep in mind when you're doing this is that your corners are not only meant to turn your work, but think of it as forming this little square right here. Together, they're going to form a square. Your midsections are gonna be your straightaways. So try to keep your square in line as much as possible. It's not gonna be a perfect pattern. It's not gonna perfectly align all the time. So do not beat yourself up and try to and make yourself crazy if everything doesn't align up perfectly. But try your hardest to make these squares create a square. And then in the beginning, your midsections are going to create squares and then they're just gonna create long rectangles. Keep that in mind. My last note is to make sure that your tension isn't too tight. Try to keep everything flush. You just want to basically place your stitch where it belongs. You don't wanna force it or anything because there are places where you're gonna be trying to use a certain stitch and if you have too much tension on your work, you're not gonna be able to use that stitch. And you'll know more what I'm talking about during the tutorial and I'll explain it during that time, but you do not want too much tension. And not only is it gonna make it easier for you to work through your stitches, but it's just gonna look nicer. Your work isn't going to curl and it just looks pretty. So I have this one. I'm gonna be using several diagrams. This is my first diagram. This will be my second diagram. And then lo and behold, here is my third and final diagram. And you can see that I don't even have to use blocking in order for them to be nice. And that's simply because I don't use too much tension. I used to use a lot of tension on my work, but after working on this pattern and seeing that 
it just makes life easier when I don't use too much tension and it makes it look nicer, I stop doing that. Okay, so let me put these away for now. You, of course, will need your hook, hooks, whichever ones you decide. Please try not to change hooks throughout this process because the gauge is different. Try not to change yarns because the weight's going to be different. You need your scissors for those advanced who are have already been doing this for a couple of times already. When you want to change colors, tapestry needle. But for everyone, I would suggest getting some stitch markers. Stitch markers and stitch markers and more stitch markers. I just got these little cheapy ones, but I love them actually. They don't pull or snag my yarn. And they have these little snaps that I can choose to snap or not. And I don't know if they're, they're silicone or plastic, but they're very smooth, which I love. Now I'm just like always searching for these. And they come in this neat little thing. Grab your yarn. I'm using Karen Sim Simply Soft. This one is grape. But as you can see, I also have this strawberry color, this green. I'm not, I don't remember what this green's called in this turquoisey color. So those are the colors I'm using so that I can illustrate I mean, so that I can go along with this illustration. Let's see. I'm sorry this seems so long-winded. I just wanted to make sure you had all the information you needed prior to getting started. So now we will actually be starting the tutorial. Um, stretch, take a break, do whatever you need to do while I get set up again. Grab your 12-gallon cup of tea. Take a real big gulp. I'm going to try to do this video as seamless as possible. Hopefully I can do one straight shot without it, be too, without it being too overwhelming or too long. But I will also try to do an additional video of the same footage and split it up for those people. I know everyone learns differently. So for those of you who just want videos of certain sections, I will try to split that video up and do that as well. So part one, we'll probably do the prerequisite video, which is all of my notes, reading it over and over type thing. And then part one will be the middle section. Part two will be the ending corner. Part three will be the beginning corner and so on and so forth. As I previously mentioned, I was going to be reading along with the pattern. So she, Didri has 10 stitch blanket crochet pattern. Look what I made dot net. This 10 stitch blanket pattern is a conversion of Frankie Brown's 10 stitch blanket knitting, crochet, uh, knitting pattern. I would like to thank Frankie for giving me permission to write the crochet version of her lovely blanket. This pattern is free, but if you would like to show your appreciation for Frankie and her designs, you are more than welcome to make a, a donation to the Children's Liver Disease Foundation through Frankie's Just Giving page. For those of you who have never seen or heard of the 10 stitch blanket, let me break it down for you. The 10 stitch blanket is worked in a spiral or rounds of rows around a central square of 10 stitches by 10 rows. Because you are slip stitching into the rows of each previous round or row, round of rows, you will notice a little interlocking pattern along each seam on the front of the blanket, as she shows in her picture. On the back of the blanket, the seam will be more prominent. Materials needed are gonna be your yarn and hook of your choice, but make sure you use the same yarn and hook for the whole blanket. Gauge is not important as such, but if you are going to use different thicknesses of yarn, you will need to work up your own gauge square and then adjust the hook accordingly when the swap yarn thickness when you swap yarn thickness if you do not do this you're going to end up with one wonky looking blanket she also adds to uh, drink loads of tea and a good television television series i'm thinking the television series is more when you know what you're doing abbreviations us terminology used 
is going to be CH for your chain stitch, SL, ST for your slip stitch, SC for your single crochet, SC, INC for your single crochet increase, and SC, DEC for your single crochet decrease. Here is her symbols. And some notes that she added are, at the bottom of the post you will find printable re reference cards for the 10 stitch blanket crochet pattern. These cards do not contain the whole written out pattern. They contain instructions for each of the sections in a handy cutout, cut outable format so that you can print them. Cut them out and laminate them for quick reference. At the bottom she put the best place to change colors is on the outside edge of one of the middle sections. So at the end of one of the rows, that end in a chain one, the worst place to change color is right on the slip stitch edge. Don't do it. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to change the colors for this pattern and also a tutorial on how I weave my, my ends in and out. I also wanted to make sure you remember for your materials to add your stitch markers. Those are going to be very important in the beginning. I still use them even now that I know what I'm doing. They just make things so much easier and smoother for me. But especially for everyone who needs to train their eye, get your stitch markers. The corners can be particularly tricky, so make sure you use your markers as long as you need to. One favor I'd like to ask from all of you is to please, please, please be patient as I am trying to get out as much information as I can to help you with this pattern. And some parts, even a lot of parts, just may end up being very slow so that I can show you really good images of what I'm doing throughout the tutorial. Okay, thank you. This page is on a diagram and it says, Below this pattern diagram, you will find instructions and photos for how to work each of these sections. If you get stuck with this pattern, please refer back to the diagram to see which section you should be working next. Square, ending corner, beginning, ending, beginning, and so on and so forth. This is basically a zoomed out diagram of your end goal. Okay, page 7 of 15 reads, Please remember my warning about not changing yarn thickness. Hook size halfway through the blanket, unless you make very sure that the gauge will match what you have been doing up to this point. If it so happens that you don't have one of those little clay pots for the yarn, just use your tea kettle. That's what I always do. I don't have those cool nifty little things, so that's what I use. Time to drink up, buttercup. Okay, now it's time to click on part two of my 10 stitch blanket video tutorial to begin the first square. Or click on the link for my 10 stitch blanket crochet tutorial to see a full length video tutorial. This has been Mama Bear with the Daily Dash of Life. And as always, don't forget to spice up yours. May God bless you. Thanks for watching. To subscribe, click my watermark and click any video icon for more videos or to start a playlist. Check out bonus footage at Instagram and Twitter at A Daily Dash of Life. Toodles!